The podcast that you are about to enjoy is part of the Low Tree Studios Podcast Network. To enjoy more great podcasts like this one, visit LowTreeStudios.com. Wreck my podcast! Wreck, wreck, wreck my podcast. Watch out for that new episode on George of the Jungle. Welcome to the Wreck My Podcast, where we're back after a week of taking off because I moved to Texas. This week, we're not fully back, though, because one, we're doing an audio-only episode, but we'll get back to that video next week. And two, I'm not here with my normal guests, Cam, Joe, and Craiger. They're going to get a little bit more of a break. I'm here with my lovely wife, Madison. Hello. She's the queen of the jungle. Oh and, my god. Yeah, oh so we we decided to do Georgia the Jungle because we never got around to it. We did our whole Brendan Fraser month and yes. uh we ended up not doing Georgia the Jungle, but now we are doing it because it was on Disney Plus and we wanted something a little bit more just kind of dumb and easy to yes. do. I mean, after a week of sleeping on the floor, you need something just like Yeah. Nice and fun. <laughs> exactly. And this was uh, nice and fun, I yes. guess. <laughs> so nice and I fun adjacent at all. So um, thank you for being on. I appreciate it. this is really helpful because I don't have my stuff set up yet yeah. for the guys and stuff. But um, yep. maybe if you're lucky, I told them, hey, if you guys want to watch it and send me what your thoughts on it, I'll splice it into the episode oh, here. But no one's responded to me yet. And that was days ago. So they might not it's actually probably the do time it. difference. Yeah, it's <laughs> got to be the time difference. Totally. Um, so this let's uh, I feel like I haven't done a podcast in so long. It's been like two weeks now. And I'm like, like trying to get back. Into I'm trying to get back thing. into the rhythm and the flow of it. But, uh, you know, it's hard to do. So I think the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to do trailer time. Ooh. So we're going to play a little bit of a trailer here for you so that you guys can see or remind yourself if you were a fan of George of the Jungle just exactly what goes on in this 90s classic. We have a breaking story at the Bay Bridge. Nobody knows who he is. Nobody knows where he's from. But everybody knows George! where he's headed. Watch out for that! Ooh. Walt Disney Pictures presents There's five apes out there. Which one are we taking to Vegas? The incredible true story. Checkmate. The one who's playing chess. Of ape. Ow! <laughs> Tukey! Go find George. <laughs> Tuki Tuki. Another mimosa, Mr. Tuki Tuki? Tuki Tuki. The lovely Ursula. You've been head over heels for that ape ever since you brought him here. You're right. <laughs> I love him. And George. <laughs> Tuki Tuki. Ape kidnapped? Tuki Tuki. Ape napped? Duh. This summer. That's your dog? <laughs> the king of the jungle <laughs> is falling in love. <laughs> I give you the king of the jungle. So there you go. That's that's the trailer. Uh, I have some questions for you, Madison. Okay. Had you watched this before? Oh my gosh, yes. I literally remember when my brother was born. Like, what year did this come out? Um, it came out in '97. So okay, yeah. I was eight. I was gonna say my brother was born in '98. I remember yeah. my mom being pregnant and me watching this movie like on repeat. Mm -hmm. And it's funny watching it now because I'm like. It must have just been the pure physical comedy of it because definitely every other joke went completely over my head. All the jokes would not <laughs> like most of the jokes aren't actually kid friendly jokes. No. They're too. 
I don't want to say highbrow because they're not highbrow jokes, but they're jokes that you kind of have to have a grasp of like storytelling to understand. Yes. Or like some sense of pop culture. Yeah, because or something. Because I get that like smashing into a tree is funny or like slipping on yes. a banana or like an elephant peeing on you while you're in a cage is yes. funny. Those are funny, but to a kid, but a lot of the comedy came from like there was meta moments where like the yes. narrator and the characters would interact with you as the viewer or interact with each other yes. or there was even a moment where there's like this this group of uh african guys who were going out into the jungle and i think the villain fell into poop and they go this is the part of the ep- the thing where we throw our heads back now and laugh and they're telling you is that as and the viewer it. and then they do it and you're like Okay, as a kid, I, I wouldn't would understand this that. humor at all. No. It's very like now people consider Deadpool humor, you know? Like, right. I, I wouldn't have understood that. So it's kind of funny you mentioned that where, yeah, because I, I watch this as a kid all the time too. Was it literally just the comedy of people I think farting and stuff? Jungle, like, you know? Like in the beginning, it's like a cartoon type thing that yeah. happens. And then, like, I don't know. It's kind of like Tarzan. So yeah, maybe it's like it's, it's like just more like lighthearted and that. Well, it's way. funny because the guy who wrote this, I think it's a guy. It may have been a girl. I can't remember. But the person who wrote this, somebody intentionally wrote. Someone this. intentionally wrote this <laughs> script, and they purposely they called it um, Jungle Boy or something like that. Okay. They purposely didn't want to shop it to Disney. They shopped it around elsewhere because Disney owned the rights to George of the Jungle, which is a '60s cartoon. Right. Right. Which was very similar to this. It had a narrator right. and stuff like that. They didn't shop it because they were like, if we tell Disney about this, they're going to be like, that's too close. You can't do it. But no one else wanted it. So they ended up shopping it to Disney at the end as a last resort. And Disney's, Disney said, we love this. We already own the rights to George of the Jungle. So just call it, it George of the Jungle. Okay. Make it George instead of just Jungle Boy or whatever. Right. And let's just go with it. So that's that's funny too. You know, yeah. It wasn't written to be George of the Jungle. Um, so what did you think, what, what do you think was the last time you watched this before we watched it now? Oh my gosh. I must've been like under 10. Okay. Sure. Me too. Me yeah, too. It's been a long time. Like I didn't even watch it like as a teenager to be like nostalgic or anything. Like yeah. I legitimately have not seen this since I was a child. Yeah. I don't think I had seen it since I was a kid either, but what did you think watching it this time? I thought it held up pretty well. I yeah. think it's definitely not a movie like I would watch regularly, but it's funny seeing like Lisa Mann, who's very popular. You mean Leslie Mann. Leslie Mann. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, Leslie Mann. Like, mm-hmm. and she's somebody who I love now. So like realizing that that was her, like, and yeah. watching that. And I think watching it as an adult and understanding a little bit more of maybe the meta humor and stuff like was yeah. entertaining. But um, I, I probably wouldn't watch it it's, again. Anytime it's soon. another subject for me of these kids movies where jokes happen and in my head i go that's clever right. good on you for writing that but i don't actually have a visceral laugh reaction well, i think also it's smart on their end because they know that the kids are going to want to watch it so yes. they're trying to make it entertaining for the parents too. enough so, yes yeah so that they're like okay to let them keep watching it over and over so i think that here's some here's some talking points because we like to talk about what we notice as an adult compared yes. to what we noticed as a kid the meta parts in the narrator were probably the funniest parts i i enjoyed that I never realized as a kid how fantastical this movie is. A lot of it doesn't make sense. And the laws of like physics and reality just don't exist anymore. Right. Well, I mean, it is like a fun, like kids movie. It doesn't have to have all the logic of everything. It's true. Um, So the narrator, I was joking because we have, we have this running gag on this podcast where if you're a fan of Star Wars, the Clone Wars, the thing that a lot of the podcast guys don't like about the Clone Wars is that at the beginning of every episode, there's a war has gone on the high horizon. Blah, blah, blah. And there's this narrator who like is like this 1920s newscaster oh. that's like telling you what's going on before the story starts. The narrator reminded me of like that guy, his first job, where he's like, "Here we are in the jungle of Africa." Like <laughs> he was like a 1920s newscaster. But I feel like that was part of the fun of it. Like, yeah, he was trying to yeah. Do. I I get that was the shtick, but I'm just like, how funny we have this joke about we don't like this. 1920s narrator for clone wars but this is what i liked most about this movie was this um they never really explained why ursula the main character who leslie mann was wanted to go into africa to see the apes it was kind of just like a hey i'm a rich girl and i want to do this fun instagram thing you know like that's almost kind of what it seemed like yeah they didn't really explain it they just kind of made it seem like she was like really cared about the apes but she just wanted to see them. It's like she was going out there to help no, them no, or no. anything. She's like, she just cared about I really want to go. That's like, to me, like those people who go on the safaris who are just like, I want to take a picture with a tiger, but they don't yeah. care. You know, like I'm just right. like, okay, that's weird. 
Um, also, they never really explain how Ursula and Lyle were engaged because from the moment the movie starts, you get this feeling that she hates him. Yeah. So why are you engaged? I feel like the parents had set it up for her. Okay. Because even when she's like, I don't want to tell my parents. I'm like, I feel yeah. like they, they were, she came from like a very wealthy family. He was from a very wealthy family. It was kind of like they were just going to be set up to be together or yeah. something. And maybe before she met George, she was kind of okay with just going along with it or something. Maybe. Maybe this was like a, a an epiphany moment for her. Yeah. Another thing I was thinking, too, is if George was raised in the jungle by an ape and with animals, wouldn't he be way less polite and a little bit more aggressive than he was no because his brother was like a very well-read wore the glasses read all the books but even he was like to get her you have to like puff out your chest and do ooh, and throw leaves in the air like i'm like i think that you would have like i don't i don't i think you would have if you wanted her would have just taken her because in the jungle that's what you do as an animal Oh, is that what you were thinking? Yeah, I was like, I don't know. This seems a little Jeez, bit. Jordan. This seems a little too much. Like George has these Western civilization ideals that would not have been instilled in him in the jungles of Africa. Right. You know, like right. I don't think so. Um, also, George doesn't seem too phased later on in the movie going from the jungle, which he spent his whole life in, to the city, which mm. he's never been to. He kind of just like, yeah, this is cool. I'm like, no, I think you'd have a little bit more of like a hard time grasping everything. He had coffee to fuel him. I guess. I don't know. Um, product placement later in the movie with like the Nikes and the UPS oh, and everything. I was like, wow, so, so much, much product, product placement, placement here. Um, also, if Ape was so smart and he was able to speak and read and all this stuff, how did he not return George to humanity? He would understand that this is a human. How would he get him there? Who got lost here? Obviously, there's groups of people just going through the jungle all the time. He could have dropped them off with one of them. Why would he want to do that? It's his brother. But at the, I'm saying if he was like so smart at the on, like I, you just I would be like, I don't know. That. I think that you know. And here's the other thing: is if the reason is paternal or like his brother or whatever, why did he just let him go to San Francisco then without like a qualm? Be like, yeah, sure, leave. Because he knows that this is now his time where he actually had an opportunity. To have happiness. Well, you defend this movie way better than the rest of the cast would have. They probably would have just fed into it. I'm sorry. No, that's good. Um, All right, let's talk about this movie a little bit. Was there anything you noticed that that you didn't notice when you were a kid? I feel like just everything we talked about, about how, like, more like the adult humor. Like, I must have just liked him crashing into trees and stuff as a Mm -hmm. kid. But there really was, like, a lot of, like... uh, like what's what's the word I'm looking for? More like a storyline, I guess. Than like yes, what I there remember. was there was a storyline, if not like crazy, but it was there. It was there enough, yeah, for sure. Like even just like learning about Ursula and like her like going through like you know she obviously had these like pressures to marry a certain type mm-hmm. and like live a certain life, and then something as simple as like a trip like changed her life, and like she was struggling with like could I even like this person? Like he's am I allowed to? Yeah, yeah. and like oh he's so but then she fell in love with him after she saw his junk pretty much apparently yeah. or his, apparently he had the girlfriend yeah apparently he had the longest schlong ever because uh why do you have to <laughs> i don't know um uh <sighs> it was a long schlong so oh uh gosh. some some info about this movie came out july 16 1997 so summertime 97 uh it has a 57 percent critic score and a 41 percent audience score this do- typically doesn't happen. Typically, movies like this have a worse critic score, and the audience is better because they people were blinded f- by it. Brendan Fraser's abs. But no, what I'm saying is the audience is worse than the critic score, which oh, oh, it's oh. the opposite of normal. So oh. this means well, this maybe movie the is were blinded by the abs. Must be. I mean, Brendan he Fraser like was Pitt in great shape. Fight Club. Yeah, great shape for this movie. It got him the Mummy pretty much, it's which insane. came out like two years later or a year later or something like that. Um, they filmed mostly in Maui. And Kauai, which is where oh. they did all the jungle stuff. Uh, obviously, they were in San Francisco a lot, too. And then there was one scene filmed in Los Angeles. I okay. mean, you always got to have a scene in Los Angeles, right? Fair enough. It was directed by a guy named Sam Weissman. Now, he hasn't done too much. Uh, he also directed D2, The Mighty Ducks 2, oh. uh, and an episode of Monk. Uh, those were, like, the only two things that I even knew about, okay. you know? So, like, he's not the most well-known director, but okay. he directed this. Uh, we have Brandon Fraser in this movie. Leslie Mann, like you said, who played Ursula, you know, knocked up. This is 40, 40 year old virgin. She was in The Cable Guy, which I forgot about, which is oh, kind of I funny. Seen that movie in I know so I haven't long. seen that movie in forever. Um, we have Thomas Hayden Church, who played Leslie Mann's fiance, yes. Lyle. Now, he was Sandman in Spider Man 3. Yes. 
Uh, he was way bigger in that movie, though. Like, he put yes. on some weight for that movie. Uh, he was the teacher in Easy A, which we watched recently. Yep. Uh, he was also, he reappeared in George of the Jungle 2, reprised oh. his role in I'm sure straight, he did great. <laughs> straight to VHS, George of the Jungle 2. And uh, he was straight a main character. Yeah. He was a main character in the TV show Wings for like its whole run. Okay. Do you remember that show? No. no? Yeah. It was, it was a popular 90s show. No, I don't know that one. We have Richard Roundtree. Now, that was the guy who was the guide in Africa. Oh, okay. I wanted to mention him because he's Shaft. You ever hear of Shaft from the no. 70s? Yeah, he's Shaft. So oh. those of you who know who Shaft is, so he was like a it's big him. deal. He's a big deal. He's a, he's a pretty big actor, actually. No, I didn't yeah. know that. Um, the guy who played Thor, uh, one of the two uh, kind of tracker guys, yeah. the bigger set guys, he was a uh, regular on ER for a really long time. Isn't everybody. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> um, John Cleese voiced Ape. Yes. Which we, yes, you got to love John Cleese. One. He's awesome. And then the guy who played Ursula's father... Is actually yeah. Matthew Perry's dad. Yeah, and he's also in like um, he's the father-in-law in um, my big fat Greek wedding. Yes, yep. Yes. Mm-hmm. So uh, he's a pretty big actor as yeah, well. He is. And then the girl, uh, the 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 woman who played the mom of Ursula, she's uh, she's huge. a big actress as well, really huge. Uh, but more recently, she's known for playing Charlie Sheen's mom in Two and a Half Men. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Uh, honestly, I don't know if she passed away or not. No, she's alive. She's still alive. She's okay. She's in a relationship with that other big actress. I forget her name. Sarah something. Oh, so she's a part of the LGBTQ then. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. I did not know that. I didn't know that either until According you knew to that Instagram. this was going on. Yeah. Yeah. I interesting. I don't know why Instagram cared that I was watching this movie, but like the whole next day on my discovery page, it was all about her relationship. But they're like have like a twenty year age gap or something. And oh so, wow! Like, so like not only deal. are you going up against the odds with being gay, you're going up against the odds with like an age gap. To, like yeah. you're just like, how much stuff can they're we have defining, people judge us on? What's the word? Not defining all the boundaries. What is the word I'm looking De- for? Defi- defying. Yeah, defying. Defying, yeah, defying all defying. the boundaries. Gosh. Oh, good for them. Go for it. You do you, ladies. Um, so I'm gonna explain this movie here for you real okay. quick. Okay. Oh, yes, it's time for Jordan to explain the movie quickly. Sometimes in life, abs are just better than money. That's the moral of the story here. I mean, that's why I married you. Boom. There you go. Uh, I don't know if that was a compliment or (laughs) and the long schlong. (laughs) All right. uh, Let's get into the plot of this movie. Okay. This is the plot breakdown. So it started off with the old Disney logo, that blue yes, thing. I it know. made me very happy. That's yes. what I remember of like the di- now it's this big fancy fanfare, and, I know. which is cool. But I'm like, where's the old school, just like blue the '90s graphics yes, looking with deal? The one shooting star. Yeah, it has a like really crappy MIDI synth sound. <laughs> I love it. Um, so we open up with a cartoon that pretty much explains how George fell out of a, a plane <laughs> into yes. the jungle. Yes. And that's how he got there. And this this cartoon is pretty much schoolhouse rock style. It looks like a schoolhouse rock like episode, yeah. you know? Um and then we start with the live action stuff of a group of people searching for some apes. It's Ursula, her fiance, who shows up uninvited, and a group of African men, and then these two trackers that are supposedly, I think, supposed to be from Australia or New Zealand, but only one of them has an accent and the other one doesn't. Um, and then uh, it, pretty much these two trackers, they were. You ever watched Power Rangers? No. Okay, there's these two people called Bulk and Skull on Power Rangers, which are these bumbling idiots that are kind of like the antagonists, but not really like ever a threat. Yeah. These guys were just bulk and skull grown up to me. So I thought that was kind of funny. Um, What's the name? Rocket Power. Not Rocket Power. Who's the people in um, Pokemon? Team Rocket. Team Rocket. They're like them. The Jesse and James. I would say Jesse and James 
are less competent than these two guys are. Jesse and James can't do anything right. But you know what I mean? Like yes. that kind of like they're they are. they're supposed to, like you know they're bad guys, but they're not really they're like, villain esque, like but they're never a threat. Comedic relief. Exactly, yes. exactly. You got it. Um, so there's a lot of talk about this white ape, which is obviously Caucasian George over here. Um, Ursula and Lyle encounter a lion while they're away from the group, and Lyle is a bumbling idiot, so George has to save Ursula. Now I had a huge problem with this scene. Go figure. Yes, because George is fighting this lion, right? And during the fight, he says, flying pile driver, and does a move on him. He delivered an elbow, a jumping elbow. That is not a flying pile driver. George, watch some professional wrestling and learn what the moves are called if you're going to reference them. while I was watching it, I was like, I wonder if this movie would fly today because he's literally just beating up this lion, which is very clearly fake. But I'm like, I wonder if people would throw a fit. Now, here's another problem (laughs) I had. So this lion, he's fighting this lion, right? Because obviously this lion wants to eat Ursula and he's fighting this lion off. A little bit later in the movie, George is helping a monkey because the monkey's friends don't think the monkey is strong enough to hang out with them. Right. So what he does is he has the lion come in and then the monkey goes, does this weird stuff. And then the lion freaks out and runs away. Yeah. And then a second later, George winks at the lion and the lion winks back at him like they set this up to make the monkey look. So why were you fighting the lion like a few scenes earlier, but then you and the lion are all buddy, buddy, cool. No, I feel like what was happening is that at the first time they encountered each other, like he then won the lion's respect. Like, I see. And then now it's like, like the mouse and the lion were like the mouse helped them out and the lion's like, you're cool with me now. Exactly. All right. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Okay. I'll, I'll take that as, a, as an explanation. Um, so George takes Ursula back to his treehouse where Ape is there and he speaks English. Now, a few questions I have. Um, one, how did he learn to speak English, which is a big question. But two, if he speaks perfect English, like British accent, perfect English, why is George's speech broken English? Because he's he's learning English from Ape. So wouldn't you be emulating the guy you're learning it from? That is, that is definitely a discrepancy yeah it makes sure. no sense um and we also meet uh george's dog shep which turns out to be an elephant yes there you go george is helping ursula try and find her group but he starts falling in love with her so uh george uh, tries to woo ursula but you know he has the is an ape essentially so he's doing it in like all the wrong ways and everything Kinda scares her a little bit yeah so i was cracking up because at a moment i stopped for a second i went Everyone looks real clean and pretty for being in the jungle for like George for like his whole life and Ursula for like two weeks. I'm like, you would not be looking this well kept. But that's why he took her to the waterfall. Oh, they were like having yeah. all the fun in the waterfall. But also, you're you wouldn't have perfect makeup after oh, you're of done. Course you would. No, no, not Naturally. no, no, wouldn't happen. Um, so we have this weird dancing moment uh, with a Toto ripoff. I couldn't. I love that moment. I couldn't figure out what the song who performed that song though. I tried to look it up, but it's. I've been waiting for you all my life. Yeah. That one. So someone knows who sings that. Let me know, uh, because it sounded like it's a such Toto a ripoff. Cute- so actually, uh, I was false. <laughs> Madison took two seconds to look up the Toto ripoff song, and she found it. I, I didn't, uh, to be honest, I didn't look that hard. I didn't really try. Uh, who'd you say it was by? Johnny Clegg? Yes. Johnny Clegg. And what's the song title? Dela D- song. So there you go. You've been looking for it all my life. Do, 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 playing stuff. Dela. De- so there you go. Thanks, Madison moment because like that's another one where she's like been raised in this like super strict rich household and she has like all this stuff that's expected of her and he's like come dance with me and she's like oh no like I'm way too embarrassed and he's like he doesn't even know what that I'm like I don't know what is. embarrassed like, is what, yeah. it, what is it and she has to like explain it and he's like why like it's just me and then like, like no one's out here this, like you know they're just dancing all silly together and so yeah. I actually really like this moment that's a good it is a good moment you're right and that those are like the the feel good moments that you write yeah, in a script because you're like he's like starting to like break down that like part it's of her, good that, you know it's good that you were able to read between the lines of character development I on there. I love it I guess maybe it's a hopeless romantic game. yes yes um so Lyle and the trackers end up finding Ursula and George 
and Lyle accidentally shoots George because he has this lighter that looks like a gun, but it ends up getting switched with a real gun because they look identical. So he thinks he's going to just scare George with the fire, but he ends up shooting George. So now Lyle is going to jail in Africa, which let's be honest, I don't think he would make it out of there alive. Uh, And George is being taken to San Francisco with Ursula. And then the trackers realize that the white ape is or is just George. But what they do realize also is that there's an ape in the jungle that can speak English. So their new goal is let's capture this ape because we can make a lot of money off this. So we get to San Francisco and it's a classic fish out of water shenanigans happening for most of it. Uh, Ursula ends up falling in love with George, but Ursula's parents are not really for it. So Ursula's mom is pissed about it and threatens George. So when George finds out from the toucan that the ape has been captured by the trackers, he ends up leaving without saying bye to Ursula because he thinks, ah, well, I'm not really supposed to fit in here. It's that classic thing, you know, where you, there always has to be a part in every like romantic yeah. comedy where, you know their relationship is threatened or yes broken. but ursula is like no i really like him so she goes after him so george ups himself back home and uh ends up saving the ape uh or ape i guess his name is just ape, ape. right an ape called ape is his name uh and ursula follows him because she's in love and lyle ends up showing up right at the end and kidnaps ursula he's now a part of some cult i guess which didn't make a lot of sense. And then uh, he's able to, that means he's able to perform marriages and force her to marry him. It was a stretch. That was a stretch there. So George ends up saving Ursula with the biggest vine swing ever. And Lyle accidentally marries another monkey instead, which I don't know if that would hold up in court. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. Very weird. George and Ursula end up having a jungle wedding and they have baby George. And then they have like a Lion King spoof. Yes. And then at the very, the real ending is Ape goes, wait, 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 don't you want to know what happened to me? And he went to Vegas and now has a Vegas show yes. he does or something. Yes. Which I don't know. Do you, do you get workers comp? Does OSHA apply to va- to apes in I don't Vegas? Know, maybe. I don't know. He was probably smart enough to figure out his own contract. Yeah. Do you think they paid him in bananas? Or do you think wah, money? Wah. money you know? uh, so um, here's some fun facts about this movie I found out. This is, uh, obviously I said based off a cartoon. So apparently the ground in the jungle scenes was made out of mashed potatoes. Why? So I think that they had a set that they did the treehouse part in and the the floor was just mashed potatoes. I don't know. To give that it that like so earthy random. consistency when people walk, I don't know. It's weird there. Um, and then Joel Hodgson, who created Mystery Science Theater 3000, he did a pass at the script and uh, is the one who added that Ape could talk. Interesting. So those are some fun facts there. But uh, yeah, that's huh. that's all I have on it. Uh, you know, it's really, really uh, quick episodes when it's just two of us talking I about know. it. I so, know. So would you watch Would you watch it again? Yes. Or you would watch Which it again. Which is not anytime but soon. But not, not anytime soon. Now, if we had a kid, at what age do you think this movie would be introduced to them? Oh, whenever. Like, oh, you don't think it was like it, it could be any time? Yeah, because there was no cursing. There was really not a lot of violence. There was like, a long schlong, though. Yeah, but that was something that I didn't even understand when I was younger. Like, I yeah. feel like you don't really, like, a lot of that stuff you wouldn't get. That's true. But I feel like I I wouldn't care. I would let them watch it. Yeah. How about you, though? You think they would have to be a certain no, age? No, I, I don't think so. But also, no. like, I'm the one who would be like, yeah, they could watch wrestling when they're, like, four, and I would be fine oh, with it. Oh, no. But, I mean, um, I turned out fine, but. Yeah, not also, everyone would, I right? Really? I, don't know. I don't know if I would actually rewatch this anytime soon. No, because, not anytime soon. Yeah, because no. it was fun watching it, but I feel like the next time I watch it, would be with a child yeah because I, I have no reason to really watch it well beside that i said i watched it probably last when i was like eight now i'm 28 it's been 20 years so like so 50 like, yeah maybe maybe in our yeah. retirement home. yeah yeah exactly we once once we're mentally children again when we're yes. older we'll watch this yes. uh so that was george of the jungle yeah i gotta say okay have you seen encino man uh yeah, you sh- we we watched it. Too. We watched it together. So what do you think? George is better or Link is better? George. George is better. But I'm also biased because that's the one I grew up with. Where yeah. when we watched Encino Man, that was the first time I had ever seen that movie. Uh-huh. Like I'd watched parts of it when I was younger, but like I didn't watch it like in full. Yeah. So Madison, you would rather dance around the fire than it's my w- favorite moment. You would rather dance around the fire than wheeze the juice. Yes. <laughs> nice. All right. 
Perfect. Well, that was George of the Jungle. It's a little bit of a short episode. I know. I'm sorry. I feel That's like, okay. Should I say something else? No. This was this was like this was more like a episode to prime the pump to get back into yes. it because this this movie didn't have a lot of substance really. It was kind of like just a fun yeah. kids movie that really didn't have too much going on. Exactly. There wasn't a lot to look up. The cast was pretty small, honestly. So yeah. there wasn't a lot of like. Oh wow, that person I totally forgot was in it. You know, like there was only one or two of those. Um, but you know, this was a good way. We we said we were gonna do George of the Jungle back in the day. It's now on Disney Plus. Yeah. So we watched it there as yeah. well as Hamilton a bunch because oh we're gosh. obsessed with Hamilton. We've watched we watched Hamilton so many we, times. We actually toyed with the idea of doing a Hamilton episode and decided that we do something a little bit more on the Wreck My Podcast yeah. brand. Well, I mean, there's nothing really nostalgic about Hamilton. No. This is the first uh, time we've gotten well, into Well, yes, it. there is. It was the creation of our nation. No, but you know what Nostalgia I mean. Nostalgia like, as in 1776. Is, I mean, I guess it's pop culture, but yeah. it's not like nostalgic pop But also, culture. we didn't even know about it until like three weeks ago when it came out or I two know. weeks ago or whatever. That Like when it came out on Disney+, Plus, that's the first we really did anything with yeah. and we've been obsessed with it since yeah if we've been singing the song it, like it's so funny because the first like 15 minutes we were like i don't get it i don't think this we is gonna think be we're good gonna like it and then now it's constantly on repeat it grew on us so fast and we are loving it so um we are gonna do next week we're gonna start a series on jaws and the regular guys will be here we're gonna do jaws one jaws two jaws three jaws four the Revenge. No, I think Jaws 3 is The Revenge. or what? Jaws 4 has Michael Caine in it. I know that. Yeah. Which is I funny. I feel like people really are going to miss Cam and Joe this episode. Craig or, you know. But, you know <laughs> oh, Cam man. And uh, Tim over at Elite 8 Showdown is like, no, Craig is my favorite part. I should have worn Craiger so much. and like a leather jacket or band shirt or something and tried to channel my inner Cam and Joe. Yeah. That way I could have yeah. added a little bit you, more No one that. can k- channel their inner Craiger. That's just not a part most of us I can unlock. I could have put like a master's degree behind me and been Cam oh, and then, you know, yeah, I could have yeah. channeled each of their characters. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> All right, guys. So we'll be back next week with stuff. But that was this week with George of the Jungle. Check that out on Disney+. Plus. Check out Hamilton on Disney+. Plus. Watch The Mandalorian while you're over there, too. That's that's a good show on Disney+. Plus. Um, we're on Instagram and Twitter and YouTube, so check out all the links in the show notes. If you give us a rating or a review, we'll send you a sticker. So that's a cool thing we still do, uh, which I just remembered. I left all my stickers back in California, so one of the guys are going to have to go pick <laughs> those up for me at some point. Uh, Patreon to support us. We, ha- we have a n- some new patrons, actually. It's super cool. Yay! So we're doing really good on that front. But if you want to get some cool rewards... Oh, our dog is walking over here to stretch. What do you think about it, Bailey? <laughs> yep, that's what she has to say about it. So um, we are, uh-oh. Why did my computer just stop charging? That's very weird. Hopefully my charger didn't break. So, uh, yeah, sure, check out the show notes. Check out all the stuff. We'll do uh, a round-around table eventually. We're not getting rid of that. We're going to do that. But things will go back to semi-normal next week but we appreciate you checking out this episode and hearing us kind of joke about george of the jungle thanks madison for yes, thanks for having me. yes thank you and uh let's go finish doing our wash and stuff in our new home that we're still Sounds trying to get good. used to all right bye i guess i gotta say love you bye because that's what cam says One day.